So hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Garth, for speaking. It's great to have you back at another event. So Garth Sharif is the founder of Sharif Consulting, which specializes in delivering professional and leadership skill, was skill webinars and online courses. Sharif Consulting's mission is to create a learning environment that is both engaging and impactful to for your professional development. Garth has worked as an insurance professional and learning provider for over 20 years. He has also received training and worked as a professional actor. He's a member of the Alliance of Canadian Cinema, Television, and Radio Artists, and a graduate in improv from the Second City. Thanks again for Thank you, um, Alex. I appreciate the, the introduction, and hopefully everyone's able to hear me. You can always use the chat uh, if you're not able to hear me or if you have any questions. Um, as Alex introduced me, my name is Garth Sharif, and uh, I don't know how many of you took a stats course at some point in your career. Uh, I went to the University of Waterloo, my career, 20 years uh, working at, as a CPA, CA, and mainly in assurance, audit and assurance, and that's a technical area that I still work in. And why I asked that question is we are moving into this place where we're hearing this phrase, data analytics, data analytics. Now, this is not a well-defined term, data analytics, but we are hearing more of it in, across all of the service lines in which CPAs work in, for me, in assurance. So this is just a 101 primer on the mindset that some of us may have and some of us may need to go to to move into a data analytic mindset. And even for myself, um, working with a lot of analysis I I had to move into the space of thinking about things. And hey, hey, David, how's it going? And we'll do a little bit of a Rorschach test with this, and we'll see where you are. And it, I'll just show you this. It's called the Anscombe's Quartet to see where your mind is with when it comes to looking at data and why we're moving into this term data analytics. So I'm going to share my screen with you so you can see my presentation. And again. Um, at any point where I'm sharing something or saying something that isn't congruent to what you're seeing on the screen, please let me know. So again, when we think about data, I mean, accountants work in data, whether you're a tax preparer, whether you're a CFO, whether you're an auditor, a lot of accounting data, big data, accounting information, tax information, that's a big data set. And we've been doing this since forever. But when it comes to data analytics, there is a group that does it a little bit better than us in terms of embracing what it means to take this technology, and that's sports. If anybody is an NBA fan, I'm a huge Toronto Raptor fan, so you know they're struggling right now, but hopefully their data analytics can get together because Nick Nurse needs a bunch of lineup combinations. And data analytics is a part of these sports, basketball, football, baseball, and we'll talk about uh, the movie and the book Moneyball, but even tennis, tennis is using data analytics for spin rate, position, understanding the opponent on the other side of the net when it comes to singles. What's the best way to serve placement? All of this because the data is available. That's the biggest thing that's happened over the last five years. These data sets, large populations of data are available and extractable, more easier easier, that's not a word, but easier than it was before, which is opening up the door to practically using this data set for purposes of analytics. But for some of us, as I said for myself as an insurance professional, we might think in a certain mindset and we might need to start embracing this mindset. And it's not about technology. It's not about the software. It's not about using Power BI. This is 101. Right now for the profession and for many of us, we need to flip the switch into thinking in a data analytic mindset. And that's what we'll talk about in this 101 session. So the first question you might ask is what is data analytics. It is an esoteric term. It is a big term and it means many, many things. So it is not easily defined. And again, I think sometimes uh, when we look at other professions, including sports, we might actually have a better sense of analytics watching sports. For example, if you watch the NBA, they do a lot of expected value analysis and shot charts to understand where a player should shoot based on colors. Green, it means they're highly proficient in a particular area uh, on the basketball court. Red, they, they, they're, not, they're not scoring a lot. Maybe they should avoid that spot to shoot. That is a form of data analytics, but what does it mean and how do we apply it in our profession as CPAs? 
and especially with firms. So I, I don't I don't want to pick a service line, but I will. I'll take the assurance service line. So that's reviews, audits, even compilations to a degree. And I'll just look at this in terms of what we do as assurance professionals. So if anybody's working on the assurance services for their CPA firms, we use analytics broadly. We have different standards in the Canadian auditing standards, for example, for audits, where analytics is applied in planning, execution, reporting. And there are standards dedicated to analytics. But is that data analytics? And the short answer it is, right now is that we don't have in the assurance standards, and specifically for audits, there is no standard for data analytics. But the question is, and I pose this, what is data analytics? Now, I don't know how many of you have heard of this law, and I put a poll on the uh, on hop in. So hopefully this poll is working. And if it is, you can let me know. But uh, one of the questions I had was, have you heard of, let me just see if it came through, might not be there right now. I think it just ended my poll, but have you heard of Benford's law? So Benford's law is this law of large numbers and the idea and the, the math behind it is that even in a set of random numbers, a large population, there is a distribution, an expected distribution where you expect to see more ones than nines. If you look at the, the Benford's law, uh, graph there. And a lot of auditors are using this for journal entry testing to look for fraud because journal entry testing and looking at a large set of journal entries to see if there's anything exceptional or what we'll refer to as anomalies, this is a good way to go because if someone is putting in a fraudulent journal entry into the data set, they might be inadvertently and unknowingly violating Benford's law. So that's one way in which auditors have used Benford's law. Um, oh, and if I click sessions, oh, thank you, Alex. Alex is on the ball for me here. There it is. Uh, I have uh, a question. Have you heard of Benford's Law? Yes or no? For those that are here, if you want to um, click on it. So more and more individuals, and I see their votes in, more and more auditors and professionals working in CPA firms have heard of Benford's Law. For those that have uh, answered, I'm seeing yes at 66.7%. You know, a few years ago, no one had heard of Benford's Law, but Benford's Law is one small use of data analytics, and it's taking advantage of the fact that we have a large population with accounting data, but it isn't data analytics. And for those that have used Benford's Law for an audit, sometimes we'd say, oh, well, I've done a data analytic. That is one small piece. And really data analytics is a mindset. And that's what we're going to talk about and, and, and start thinking about in this one-on-one -on -one session. So I talked about a Rorschach test, a psychology test on do you have the data analytic mindset? And I will define it after this. But I like to show this first. Now, I'm, because this is uh, just a 30-minute primer of this presentation, I'll just give you some background. So Anscombe's Quartet was developed by a statistician in the 70s to really show the difference between two ways of looking at data. Now, I've been using Anscombe's Quartet when I deliver, so I deliver professional training to CPA firms across the US and, and Canada. And I use this as a, as a Rorschach test, as I mentioned before. So I've given auditors from staff to partners the Anscombe's Quartet data set. And I say to them with an open-ended statement, analyze this data. I would say 90% of those, and that's the only instruction I give them, and I'll show you the data set in a second, they do things that we're comfortable with. They start looking at variances, do means, modes, standard deviation. So here is, let me show you the data set that Anscombe created. So this is, there's no point looking at it to say, look at every single number, but the idea with it and we're not going to do it here. I'm just going to give you this brief synopsis is that you have four tables, data set one, two, three, and four. They're not attached to any company. They don't mean anything. And you have these columns, X, Y, for each data set. And so when you ask a group of auditors or CPAs to do something, I just say, do something with this data set. What do they do? They typically do what you'll see at the bottom table. They look at the means. They look at the standard deviation, and they come to this interesting conclusion. Oh, looks like the means across all data sets, data set one, two, three, and four are the same. 
looks like the means for y across all four data sets are the same. And they think, well, that tells me the story that there's some similarities with the data set. And that's what's referred to as summary statistics. What you're seeing with mean standard deviation, um, slopes, internet, <laughs> internet, intercept, and R squared is what is referred to as summary statistics. And that's the way CPAs generally work when we talk about sampling and analytics. We think more of dividing one number into another, taking averages, summary statistics. And if you look at summary statistics, for this table data set, you'll come to a conclusion that even though you can't look at the data and make a conclusion when you start going through the means and, and standard deviations, they look like they actually share across X and Y similar traits. But this is where what Anscombe wanted us to do dramatically. How many of us would have graphed this data? What would, if, how many of us initially would say, I'm not gonna go into means standard deviations, I'm going to graph it. I'm going to represent 100% of the data set in front of me with a graph. And that's what a graph is, referred to as visualization. And again, my experience is that nine out of 10 auditors, staff to partners don't graph. Maybe some of them get there, but they don't, they don't go immediately to visualization. And Anscombe wanted to make a point that if you plotted these four data sets, data set two, three, and four, again, this data doesn't mean anything that they produce completely different data. Whereas you look at the summary statistics, you had the, the X means and Y means to be the same. These data sets are completely different as visualizations, as graphs. And so part of this is how many of us look at information in a visualized way, in a way that represents 100% of the data set. Again, the MBA does this. There's something called the Kirksberry um, shot chart that shows a player's shot chart, 100% of the data as a visual representation of where they're hot and cold. And the idea with data visualization as a subset of data analytics, and I'll, I'll define it shortly, is that you get 100% of the data in front of you. And with that, you might be able to do more things, ask more questions. And again, one of the things we'll, I'll point out, data analytics is not a cure-all. It won't necessarily mean that you'll find fraud in, in an audit as an example, but it's a different way of looking at the data. So, so here's an, a definition of audit data analytics come from the EICPA and CPA and CPA Canada. The science and art of discovering and analyzing patterns, identifying anomalies and extracting other useful information and data underlying or related to the subject matter of an audit. Again, it could be for anything, but we'll, we use an audit through analysis, modeling and visualization. Again, that definition is a bit, okay, science and art, what does it mean? Let's hone in on visualization because we just went through Anscombe's quartet. This is data visualization, the graphical representation of information and data. With data visualization, a subset of data analytics, you get 100% of the data in front of you, not in the way that we typically look at it, for, for example, for assurance practitioners in terms of samples, but you look at it in terms of the entire data set in front of you looking for exceptions. I'm gonna demonstrate this to you shortly with a software that we've used just for learning purposes. So right now you might be thinking, all right, I understand this, but how does this apply? Well, with this 101, the big change in our profession is to start to think with a data analytic mindset, to start to say, not what are the technology tools, What? how do I use Power BI, or if I'm using an audit, how do I use IDEA or MindBridge? That's the next phase. The first phase is to say, what is in front of me when I have a huge data set, like accounting information? Will I go to means, modes, averages, variance analysis, which again, most of us are comfortable with, or will I move into a different direction first? And it doesn't mean that means, modes, or averages, summary statistics are bad. It just that means we have another way of looking at the data that might be more useful potentially, or at least gives us some other tools. So part of this would be to ask you, have you performed data analytics the way I've described it on an audit? Again, very esoteric definition. There's a polling question. I'm gonna say, and I see two of you have voted yes. So if you use Benford's law, that is a data analytic, that is a data visualization, but most, assurance practitioners, and again, I won't speak for tax, that's not my, my speciality, but I imagine that would be the same 
we're not all into this. And I think some of it is we have a hang up on the technology. We have to be uh, Power Excel users or use something like Power BI. But we first need to understand what it is that data analytics are, are, is, is giving us. And that's where we're going to spend a little bit of time. I have a brief walkthrough. Um, and again, some of this is summary statistics versus data visualization. This is what Anscombs was trying to say. When you show data visualization, when you show 100% of the data set, you can draw a different conclusion. Right now, no, better conclusion, worse conclusion. That's we still have professional judgment in our in our profession, but a different conclusion. And we have large data sets. We have accounting information. One of the largest data sets you can have. I'm an entrepreneur. I, I put everything on my my on QuickBooks. That data set is large enough that you could do a whole bunch of analytics. And I do it on my data set a little bit more than I did before because my mindset has changed with it. So let's go through this analyzer. I'm gonna go through a data set with you. And we're gonna have some fun. This was designed by Michael Thomas at a Catchbrook Analytics who I work with. He's based out of Connecticut in the US. And this is a learning tool just to, just to think about how we can actually apply this. And this is going to be looking at accounting information. So here's the accounting information we're going to be looking at. Now, this is a raw data set of an accounting information systems dump, like a general ledger dump. And it's funny with journal entry testing, some of you for auditors have gone through, use Benford's law, but a lot of times we just like eyeball things or we use filters. But we have we, can, we can't really absorb 100% of this data set. I can't with my eyeballs or even with filters say, what is 100% of this data set doing? I have to use something, but also be in the position to ask good questions. And that's where we can leverage our skill set and intelligence as CPAs. So let's get into this. So I'm going to show you, and it's called an audit analyzer. I'm just, it's not necessarily audit uh, focused, but it's a way of looking at the accounting information I just showed you. Because that was a CSV file, like a data dump you can get from QuickBooks or any type of accounting software. But what do you do with all that a huge a spreadsheet with a billion rows and a billion columns? You can filter it, you can do VLOOKUPs. You know, there's, there are some things you can do in Excel, but we're gonna show this in a way that gets us thinking about uh, visualization. So what I'm going to do, and this is the future for our profession. When we think about interns coming to CPA firms, what I see the future for interns and staff, new staff is that they'll be data curators. They'll be the ones looking at a population of data and cleaning it so that we can extract the data into a software such as this. And again, designed by Catchbrook Analytics. So I'm gonna draw in some information. I That CSV file that I showed you with that data dump, I am going to grab it. And I am going to bring it into this audit analyzer. And here it is right here. Okay, so it's brought it, and then I'm going to give it a header, and I'm, this is data curation, what it means cleaning the data so that it can actually work. Um, and part of this is that, oop, let me just try this again. Part of this is that the future of this will be that students will probably um, do this work. They will probably get the data set up so that we can easily draw it in. So let me just try that again. I'm gonna bring it in, bring in this data set, Upload complete, that's what I was looking for. Data preparation, header, and it's what it means, comma, semicolon, tab, is how the information is, is separated in the data set I just showed you in that Excel, in that Excel worksheet. I'm gonna apply it, and there we go. So information's already been subsumed by this software. And so what you can see already, I have 100% of the data set in front of me. Like, what's the difference here between looking at this screen and looking at this screen. <laughs> this screen I can't do anything with. I, I'm gonna do some filters and stuff, but it's hard. Here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my knowledge and narrow the information down to questions that I wanna ask specifically of the data. So when we talk about this, um, we're gonna do some data curation, a little bit of what the future looks like for interns and staff. Um, this is the way in which the data is denoted in the CSV file. I'm gonna give it some, some texture by uh, giving the column headings uh, more of a specific label. So a payment date would be date and an amount would be numeric. And I'm gonna apply these columns. And already I have this information in front of me, 100% of the data set. Uh, and I could also look at these 168 um, rows in the data set that are missing some information. And if you look at the table below, maybe it's missing the fund name. This is an accounting data set. But what I really wanna do is do some work. So here's the curated data set. What we mean by curation, curated data, this is 100% of the data in front of me right now. Again, I'm not doing anything with it yet, but it means that it's been cleaned, that there's column headings, 
Uh, I've set it up with uh, date for dates, numeric for numbers, and I'm ready to do some data analytics. If you're ready with me, let's go. Let's do some data analytics here. So what we're going to do is we're going to ask some questions of it. We're going to use four visualization techniques just as a sample. This is Data Analytics 101. Scatter plot, uh, histogram, time series, and heat map. Let's get into the scatter plot. Okay. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to ask this accounting information some, a specific question. And this is why it, data analytics is not just mindless, give it to the software, let it do its thing. We have to be actively involved in understanding relationships that we're gonna ask, because that's how we're gonna find this information valuable. So based on, let's just say, the pre-understanding of this information, I'm gonna ask for um, a relationship between two accounts that I think should have a relationship. And a scatter plot is a relationship-based visualization. So judicial and corrections. So I'm gonna apply that. And what you should see, Ah, there we go, is judicial and corrections to expense accounts. And what I can do is say to myself, oh, one, I can ask myself, are these two accounts worth comparing? Because I need to see a trend line. If there's no really relationship between the two accounts, the scatter plot doesn't work, right? So again, it, it does really require us to know some information. But if I draw um, a trend line, I can see that there is a relationship between this. And next, I can move into anomalies. So if I'm a CFO, I might say to myself, and that's why it's one of these is not like the other. It's a little bit of Sesame Street. I can go in here and go, what is this over here? And take a look at this. And in this month, and this is by month, by the way, in month seven, the relationship of judicial to corrections was much higher than we would expect in terms of their relationship. And I can just investigate it, ask some questions. Again, what this gives us is 100% of the data in front of us. Let's take a look at a histogram. So a histogram is the volume of transactions by magnitude. And we typically only look at one account. So I'm going to take a look at legislative. I'm going to apply this. And what we can see with this, a legislative expense account, is that most of the transactions uh, in terms of the frequency occur between 0 and 1,000. There's 84 counts between zero and a thousand. That's a normal distribution. That's the word we want to use in data analytics. It's a normal distribution for this. But then again, this is anomaly testing. That's the anomaly testing, anomaly inquisition. We, we take a look and say, what is going on over here? And I can just draw in on that. And then I have these four amounts that make up the frequency of account of transactions for leg legislative between nine and 10,000, which is outside its normal distribution. And again, as a CFO, I might ask some questions. An auditor, I might want to know what these are. But what I'm doing with this is a different way of looking at this information where I might have normally done some statistics, some summary, some sampling. I'm looking at it as a 100% representation through a graph. And again, the graph that makes sense for the account. Uh, let's go into health and hospitals for this one. This is called a time series. And what it's interesting with a time series, it looks at, looks at a data set across time. So here we have this data set that's across time and we have these peaks and valleys. And part of this, these peaks and valleys, which we can examine, is that these peaks and valleys might represent month closes or seasonality. And so we might actually expect, and this is why it's important to not just take away a professional judgment, we might expect there to be you know, some peaks and valleys. But then we just look at this and go, what is going on over here? Why is there... Um, why is there a level of activity here that I wouldn't normally expect in the normal distribution of what I see in previous months? And what I can do is I can adjust this amount and go, oh, well, this is 993,000 that occurred on April 12, 2017. What is that? I can ask that as an auditor. I can ask that as a CFO. I'm just asking questions, right? It leads up more questions. The final one I wanted to show you was a heat map. And this just looks again at the entire set of the data across a calendar. And so what I'm gonna use for this one is regs and protection. I'm gonna apply it here. And this is actually used by the MBA. Remember when I was referring to Kirk Goldsberry's shop chart? This is an MBA type thing where you just look at the red, it's hot, something hot, like something's outside the normal you know, distribution and, and the cooler colors are in yellow in, in the way that it's been designed here. And I'm looking at this, I'm thinking, what is going on here? What is this? Why is this? And I can click on it and just zone into the information and go, well, 
the payment of 333,367 uh, created a, an outside normal distribution um, for any of the months. And again, as an auditor, you might want to ask questions. As a CFO, you might, you know, just want to have documentation. There's different ways to look at this this information. So this is data analytics. Um, this is a, a, a quick way of looking at it. And that's what we did with this data set. Like we just, within like five minutes, we had a lot of interesting conversations where just taking a look at this Excel spreadsheet might've been a little bit harder to, for us to have substantive conversations. Now I'm not saying that the visualization is the cure all for everything, not at all. This is just like a one-on-one uh, discussion of this, but it's an interesting place for us to discuss uh, what it's looking like for the future of our profession and embracing this. So the last piece uh, of this is like a little bit of a SWOT analysis. Like as I showed this to you, you might say, well, what am I getting out of this? Well, this is still developing in our profession. Again, the sports world is a little bit quicker than us here. Um, and you can answer the, the, the next polling question if you've seen it here, which is um, a question on have you applied, I believe, oh, have you seen the film Moneyball? I think that was the question. But part of this is, a little bit of Moneyball. If you've seen the movie Moneyball or read the book, Michael Lewis's book, this is there's a question of how, as a profession, baseball was embracing this new way of looking at data and players. Uh, there was this you know, a, a version of looking at baseball players in, in ways that are different. And then there was a new sort of way that was brought in by uh, Brad Pitt's character in the film, uh, Billy Bean, the general manager of the Oakland Athletics, who brought in an economist to take a look at bringing things into a data analytic with war, wins above replacement, and on-base percentage, and, and other advanced metrics, what they refer to in the film as sabermetrics. So the question is, like, we're not there. We're actually baseball is a little bit further than, than us. But what happens when we start to look at this? Well, what are the benefits? 100% of the data. We get 100% of the data in front of us could lead to better decision-making, more efficiency, ability to actually leverage our, our professional judgment. Well, what are some of the weaknesses of this? For the audit standards, there's no standards for data analytics. Like, is it, 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 doing something like a scatter graph, is that as the same or as much value in terms of quality of audit evidence as sending a confirmation? Don't know yet. Data extraction, the data extraction process was fairly simple. I did it in about two minutes, but that could be a problem. How do we get information from a, from a client, from another source into something like the audit analyzer, into something that we can use? That's gonna take a little bit of time, both from clients and from us. And there can be costs and training involved and everyone sort of get, getting on board with this. What about opportunities? Well, there's potentially new ways we can add value to client service by uh, looking at data uh, at, at our clients, especially for decision-making in ways we didn't before because we're using some of these tools, but also thinking in this mindset, not just the tools. Uh, again, there could be quicker decision-making with that as well. What are the threats to this? And you know, if you're doing a SWOT analysis, you couldn't, could not uh, um, miss this one on threats. Potentially, decline in professional judgment. Maybe we move into a data analytics phase. We just use a graph and say, oh, everything looks fine. We don't need to get it, our hands dirty. And we just leave it up to the, the analytic to move us into a quicker, but not more rich decision. Um, it's just moving us towards the automation of the profession with machine learning and other technology and ethical decision-making. Are we making good decisions? If we look at Ascom's quartet, I mean, those are the same data set looked at two different ways can move us into two different decisions. And I think even those are, those are threats, those are also opportunities for us to say, as CPAs, we're still part of this. This is a big part of what we do. We've come in and look at information. We're gonna use new tools, but we're still using our, our intelligence. And again, if you've seen um, Moneyball, this is similar to um, the discussion there. Final piece as we come to the last two minutes of this session is Data Analytics 101. To me, it's not about the software yet. It's not about analysis paralysis. It's about curious, creative, current. I was, if I was going to sum up this presentation in one, in one, in the sort of the main focus of it, I look at Anscombe's quartet. Can we start looking at data in different ways, um, graphically, uh, ways in which we can take 100% of the data and doing things with it? And we don't need to get into the software, the the nitty gritty. We just need to think about it and brainstorm our knowledge of our clients and understand if we can apply these. Now, there's a gap that we have to cross in terms of starting to understand how to apply some of these tools like Power BI. But the first step is to embrace this mindset. And again, I think Anne Gomes Quartet is a good one for that mindset. So here we are with 30 minutes. 
data analytics 101 and you know a high level look at this but um thank you uh for your time uh for this session and that's my contact information garth at shreveconsulting.com i'm on linkedin our website Shreve consulting we do uh, provide uh courses on data analytics and, and what's going on deeper dive in that software but uh, if you have any questions for me please let me know thanks everyone i i appreciate it and i haven't checked the chat because i was been looking at the polls but um, I'll stay a little bit for the poll or for the chat, but um, other than that, um, thank you.